something nice waking right here. It could just be mullet. Or not. Whoa. Something pretty good size here. Woo! All right, Fishaholic fam, well, welcome back to another episode. Today, we're switching things up. We're here in Boquilla, Florida, staying at uh, Tarpon Lodge. And right now, I'm joined by Mike up, from people? Tackle of the People. Good to see yeah. you. And Cameron from Salt Strong. Up, and we've got a lot of other content creators um, with us for the next couple of days. But we're the only three brave souls that are going to be venturing out into unexplored territory in the kayaks. And we've got kind of a cool, like, Salt Strong tournament going on. And uh, Cameron, can you help explain to yeah. the, the folks at home what, what's exactly going on uh, yeah. between all of the content creators and what's at stake? So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, big <laughs> things at stake, including Rich's redfish mm -hmm. belt up you, again this year. If you guys remember last year, uh, we were in Arapica, Florida, mm -hmm. and we had like a the similar little term, tournament, and I took home the redfish belt. So we've kind of got similar rules, but yep. you can explain for the, the yeah. first time viewers. Yeah, yeah. So we've got biggest snook, biggest red, biggest trout, mm -hmm. each place with a belt. And then we're doing something special. We're going to be giving away this one particular lure. It's the Fred Jerk Shad. Um, so you guys can get that for free. And whoever gets the biggest species, doesn't matter what, you know, shark, big redfish, snook, whatever it is, <laughs> whoever gets the biggest fish is going to walk away with one of our slot machine rods too. Ooh, okay. So that sounds pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. You guys ready to hit it? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Let's go catch some fish. and we are on our way. And before jumping in the kayak, I actually sent up the drone and right here by the north side of this little inlet, I spotted a bunch of snooks. So I'm heading there first. And part of the rules of the tournament as well is the fish that we catch in order for them to count have to be on salt strong lures. So to start, I have the moonwalker tied on. And then on this setup, I have the pink jerk shad. Let's put some Dr. Juice on this jerk shad. By the way, if you want to get a free bottle of this, just check the link in the description and Salt Strong will hook you up with a free bottle. And also, uh, this is the lure that they are giving away as well. You get a pack of these for free, so just check the description for all the information about uh, the Salt Strong lures and products. Let's check the time. It's 7.35. I believe low tide here is at like a little after 8 a.m., like 8.05 or something like that. So we're getting really close to the end of this outgoing tide. So who knows if it's gonna be any good, but we're gonna try it. Let's try the moonwalker. Oh, there's a bite. Come on back, come on back. Oh, he's on it, come on back. Come on back. That sounded like a snook. On the moonwalker. Something nice waking right here. It could just be mullet. Or not. Whoa. Something pretty good size here. Something even bigger wake in there. Is 
it's a light setup so that's why it's really ripping what do we have here this is a nice fish whatever it is This might be a cobia. On the pink jerk shad. I literally think I just got a cobia on the pink jerk shad. I saw him cruising like right below the surface. That's insane. I can't believe I got a cobia. <laughs> like on a flat right here. That is just insane. Now I just got to get him in the net. I only got 25 pound test fluoro leader and 15 pound braid. So I got to baby him in right now. I just want to get this fish in the net really badly. All right, in the net. Woo -hoo -hoo! Yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Woo! Look at that. That is so cool. All right, let's get them on the fish grippers. And now I gotta get a measure of this fish. And then I'm actually gonna probably throw her back, but I really wanna get a good measure on her so that this fish possibly could win the biggest fish species to be caught on the Fred pink jerk shad. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, this might take the category. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, I was gonna throw them back though. It's a shame, but I mean, I, I don't have, I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna keep them all day, you know. So, Cobia, Good job. thanks, man. <laughs> I'm just gonna layer flat right there, so I can lay the tape measure out. About 39 and a half, the tip of the tail. 39 and a half incher. First entry in the tournament, starting off strong. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get her back in the water. I know some of you guys may be thinking I'm crazy for releasing her, but we literally just got out here and we have a long day ahead of us, right boys? And we're not trying to go back already and we don't have coolers with ice on the kayak so it's best just to throw this fish back. Alright guys, so I've been dragging this fish around for a minute or so and you know I measured this fish to the tip of the tail but I'm also going to get a fork, a t fork tail measure and it's sitting just at 35 inches, that's 40. And the tail tip here was 39 and a half, and there's 35. And that's the proper way to measure a cobia if you plan on harvesting one for the table. You measure them to the fork of the tail. But I just measured it to the tip of the tail because of the tournament that we're doing. There she goes. Yoo! That's what I'm talking about. Let's keep it going. 
So before I forget, this is the setup that I used to catch that Cobia, and the reel is a Daiwa Ballistic MQ LT 4000D dash C paired with the seven foot medium fast action dark matter psychedelic green spinning rod. And I've got 15 pound green moss powerful braid, a 25 pound fluorocarbon leader. And then I'm just rigging this little Fred pink jerk shad weedless with an EWG uh, worm hook, just like that, because there is a lot of uh, grass around here. So rigging it like this, you keep it weeds free and then more prone to getting eaten and it looks like a little bait fish just darting along as you jerk it, hence the name. All right guys, so I just wanted to say this as we're kayaking back towards the area where I got that cobia and where I had that first bite on the moonwalker. And you know, I'll take luck over skill most of the time, especially when fishing a new area and I have like probably like 0.001% knowledge of right now. I, the only knowledge I have is basically of the launch and the little creek that we came out of and this inlet here. And it, it's just crazy that in the last like 10 minutes, I've had three bites. I got the two on the moonwalker and then I saw the fish cruising. And for a second, I thought it was just gonna be like big mullet. And <laughs> I was really surprised when all of a sudden that fish just nailed it. And then there was a, another fish that waked off that was much bigger, that probably was either many more cobia or just one larger cobia, uh, who knows, but that was just insane. And I can't be happier right now. My day is already made and we just started fishing. So that's amazing. And who knows, maybe we'll run into a few more out here, but let's keep exploring this beautiful area. There we go. Found a snook. There we go, in the net. All right, not a giant snook, but I'm still gonna measure them because if no one else catches a snook in two days, then I could take home the gold, or the belt in this case, for the biggest snook. Just about 20 inches. Nice. The Fred is getting it done. Whew. So I'm get, hopping out of the kayak just briefly because I spotted some bait fish on this flat. And I do have my cast net and my bait bucket, so I just wanna see if I can get a few because having some bait is better than having no bait because I can already see it happening that like we find a bunch of big fish and I can't get them to eat lures. So if we don't have bait, then we're not gonna get them on bait or with lures. Even though if we get one on bait, it's not gonna count, but I still would love to just catch it. Keep it going. Yo, yo. Catch anything, Mike? I think I found those cobia at some point. You saw more cobia? I saw two like, big black fins swimming next to each other. Oh, wow. Yeah, that probably could have been more cobia. Yeah. I was either thinking that or, or maybe dolphins. I don't know. Yeah, or um, bonnet head sharks, small bonnet head sharks. Yeah, but they're swimming like, right next to each other. Yeah, that, there's a good chance it was cobia then. Did you get any uh, fish or? Oh yeah? Slammed the lure, dra ripped some drag, and then it came off. And then when I brought, the, when I brought it back, it was just, the leader was just sliced in one area. So. Oh yeah, pro so it probably was a snook then. Yeah. All right. We made it right outside this other creek mouth or inlet. And what's cool is there's a flat that extends out past this point. And then on the left, it's slightly deeper. And then on the right, 
it, uh, like closer to the mouth, it's slightly deeper as well. So as this current's starting to push us over it, I'm just gonna fan cast this whole area and see if I see anything or get any bites. Oh, just had a good bite. Oh, good redfish. There he is. Right on the flat. Whew, there he goes. <laughs> on the Fred Pink Jerk Shad. Oh. That was lucky, I gotta tell you that. Just totally blind casted this area and within like two or three casts, I just got nailed. Oh, it's a good size redfish. Oh no, no, stay hooked, stay hooked. It just got like real light for a second. Like the hook like popped out of maybe where it was sitting. Yeah, woo! Nice redfish. There we go. Look at that stud. That is what I'm talking about. And by the way, one thing that I love to do when I'm tying direct to a jerk shad is look at that, I'm tying with a loop knot so this bait has tons of action as you're jerking it side to side. All right, let's try and get a nice measure on this fish. Look at that, 28 inches, sweet. All right, let's get a nice healthy release on this red. All right, now that is what I'm talking about. Whew, oh look at that. Cast right there, big fish popping bait. It is going off right now, right here. Let's get back out there. Oh, big splash way out there. Oh, I'm on, fish on. A little ways out there, something really nice hit. Oh, no way. It's a Spanish mackerel. <laughs> Look at that. We got a Spanish mackerel. <laughs> and that's a pretty decent one too. Look at that. So cool. See ya. All right, so you guys see that creek mouth in there and where that little like sandy patch is. So Cameron went in there and he said that he saw a couple big snook in there, so. I'm gonna let the current now push me away from this flat because we're probably like 50 casts in now since that Spanish mackerel and I haven't had a decent bite. And I'm pretty comfortable with that 28 inch red we got. Uh, you know, it would be nice maybe to get like a 30 incher 
and that might definitely be safe from getting beaten. But uh, we have today and tomorrow to compete in this little tourney. And the other guys that we're fishing with that are on boats right now are uh, Luke and Joe from Salt Strong, Ryan Morey, Brent from Sea Dude, and JC from JC Fishing, Brad from Bearded Brad, and Matt from Bama Beach Bum. So a real good group of guys and wow. Look at what happened to my jerk shed. So I'm, I saw some snook right in here in a school swimming along the mangroves. Let's try a pinfish. Maybe this will work. Oh, I got eight. There he is. Oh, I lost them. Dang. That was a better sized snook. On the pinfish. Let's try another bait, but this slightly larger pinfish. Oh, I got eight, I got eight. There he is. Good fish. Oh yeah, a nice red. There we go. All right, and there you have it. Beautiful fish. There she goes. All right, now that we got one on the bait at least, let's try flipping this jerk shad way up in these mangroves and maybe we'll get lucky and get a snooker redfish to eat this. Oh, there's another fish. Micro snook. Oh, there's a dolphin cruising right at me. Swim, little dude, swim. Say if I just dropped that snook right here, that guy probably would have tried to scoop him up. All right, guys, a little update for you. So we're starting to get into a midday. It's almost 12 p.m. And I was talking with Cameron just a little while ago. He passed by through the creek and he's on his way back to the launch to get lunch. But he was out by a chain of islands a little outside this creek and he said that he got some trout, saw a bunch of mullet and had some big reds on the mullet. So Mike and I are gonna stick it out and we're gonna go out there and you know see if we can keep grinding and hopefully uh, learning more and potentially could get some more fish in the kayaks. And uh, Mike, you, you said you had a big fish on, right? Up in the yeah, creek? I had a good one on, man. Yeah. Like, I, I lost it. Did it rip some drag or it was just instant break off? It was, I felt the thump, went to go set the hook and got cut off. Yeah. yeah. And Mike's only using 20 pound leader. I'm only using 25 pound leader. So it, it kind of sounds like a big snook possibly that just hit it. They turn so hard and they got on a really abrasive mouth, razor sharp gill plates, and they can make quick work of 20 or 25 pound test especially with a lure. If you're using like a circle hook with bait, you have a much better chance of landing a fish like that. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead, check out those islands and see what happens. And you know, if we're feeling ambitious, maybe even go further out and hit some channels and see if we can find some floating stuff, might be able to catch some triple tail, which would be really cool. Or see another cobia. <laughs> so stay tuned guys, let's keep it going. All right, let's see what's by this chain of islands here. And what a day, it is just absolutely gorgeous out here.
Just spotted a uh, school. Uh, I can't talk. I just spotted some redfish right here in this cut between the islands. There's a couple redfish right here. Wow, they didn't even move an inch. Oh! One of them tried to eat it. I'm gonna hop out of the kayak because of this shallow oyster bar here. And I'm gonna try just creeping in closer to this little island. And I'm thinking maybe I'll be a little more stealthy like this. And then if I spot a red, I could throw this Mahara right in front of them. Oh, I just spotted a bunch of baby little finger mullets right here. That'll be perfect for redfish. Let's get the net out and try and catch some. All right, I got a bunch of mullets. Look at all those juicy baits. Redfish candy. And basically any predator that swims candy. Oh, I see. They're really small. Got it. Good fish that just swam right by there. Oh, oh, oh. He ate it. He ate it. There he is. Good fish here. Woo! Oh, he cut me off. I think it was a shark. Might have been a shark. Yeah, clean cut. All right, we're back in the kayak, and unfortunately, it was kind of futile here at this uh, chain of islands. Although I did have a couple redfish opportunities that I didn't capitalize on. Uh, since then, I, you know, it's been like a couple hours now, and the only other stuff we caught was the mullet, and then we had a shot at that shark. Uh, I believe it was a shark, or it could have been, I guess, a big redfish that maybe just nicked the leader on an oyster and it got cut, but I think it was a shark. But I do really like this spot. I think it has a lot of potential and every spot usually has a good time and tide to be there. And there was like three other charter boats or guides that pulled up with like customers it looked like. And they're not coming here for no reason. They definitely are coming here because this is a good spot and that's what Mike and I both agreed on. So maybe tomorrow we'll try and hit this again, but we're gonna go back to the creek and the outgoing tide's gonna start any minute. So maybe uh, that'll be the spot. So stay tuned. Oh, you got a fish? Nice, nice. We just got back to the creek and I gave Mike a fresh mullet and he pitched it into the mangroves and he got nailed. Hard, hard hit? No, super softy. Oh, really? This is right in the same spot where I got the second one earlier. All right. <laughs> Sweet. Nice, that's a good one. Beautiful fish. Sweet, got it. All right, pretty sweet. Mike got his first redfish, and he literally hooked into that within like the first minute since we got back to the creek mouth. And I know some of you guys are gonna say it, and you should just comment it down below to get it out of your system, and that is you never leave fish to go find fish. But we're in a beautiful new area, so we tried to explore around a little bit just so we have you know backup plans, because you know, say if we come out here tomorrow and this spot stinks, then we can go out and you know check out the islands because there were fish there and maybe tomorrow there'll be more, you know, because there's a lot of bait out there, so you never know. And earlier the bite also slowed up here, so it, it was cool to go out there and just uh, check something else out. And I think now we're gonna just stay in here for uh, the rest of the afternoon into the evening until the sun sets. So for the rest of the afternoon, we fished every inch of this creek and I could only find a ladyfish and one more little snook to eat. Mike had an issue with the pedal falling off his pedal drive. So after that, we decided to head back. 
I fished and followed behind Mike as he paddled against the strong winds. I hit some great looking seawalls and docks, but still it was extremely futile. How your arms feel? When I saw the first house, I was like, thank God we're almost back. <laughs> I was so tempted to just stop and cast into those docks. Yeah, I, I took some casts, but I didn't get anything. Dude, but then I was like, if I make one cast, I'm gonna have to like paddle like five times more to make up for it. Yeah, the, the wind is really honking out yeah. there. But what a brutal second half of the day. Whew. So Mike and I packed up our kayaks. And then we headed back to Tarpon Lodge to get cleaned up and have dinner with the rest of the guys. Wow. How's everyone doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Not as good as you. Yeah. Did, did you guys all get some fish today? Oh, yeah. Crushed it. You did? <laughs> yeah. I caught a 39.75 inch Kevin. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> It was definitely dumb luck. It was dumb. It was dumb luck. The cobia was total luck, and the red. Like, let let's enjoy some good food now. How's the menu look? It looks good. Thank you. That looks beautiful. Check that out, guys. The catch of the day, fresh triple tail. Let's try it out. All right, we got a little piece of fish, rice, asparagus. Wow, you mm. guys are adorable. Delicious. All right, fishaholics. Well, it is the next morning, and Mike and I are going to brave it again and go out in the kayaks uh, just till probably like 10 or 11 a.m., and then we're going to go back for lunch and then possibly uh, go out in the boats later on. So let's uh, get the kayak rigged and ready and hopefully we can get on some more fish. All right, we made it to the inlet and we're just starting to get some light in the sky as you can see. And I'm gonna start out with the Moonwalker, like I did yesterday. And we did have a nice bite on the Moonwalker yesterday. Like that was our first bite actually. And then we got the Cobia and then the little snook after. And I saw a lot of snook on the north side of this inlet. So I think the potential is here. And as you can see, it's a lot different this morning. It's, a, it's much windier. So who knows if these fish are still going to be here, but we're going to take a few casts and find out. Hmm. No bites on the Moonwalker after a couple dozen casts. Let's take a few casts with the Fred Pink Jerk Shad. Alright, nothing on the pink jerk shad, and I think it's a little too light because I'm using a weightless EWG hook. So I'm going to cut this off, and I'm going to put on a weighted hook, and maybe I'll try the mulligan right here, which is a little bit bigger of a swim bait than the Slam Shady swim bait. This one is about like four inches. Alright, check it out. That looks pretty good. Let's put some Dr. Juice on it and start casting away. There's also a nice channel edge right outside of the shoreline where it drops to like three, four feet. And maybe because it's a little rougher, some of these fish could be sitting where it's a little deeper. There's a fish. What do I got here? Oh God, he jumped over the net. <laughs> a little snook, literally right in the same exact spot where I got the one yesterday. See you little dude. 
let's keep it going. Now there has to be some bigger snook around here, but they might be harder to entice to eat. I got one snook. Nah, like 18 inches. Bigger one. Oh yeah, this is much better. Woo! Oh God. Oh no. This one might be bigger than that 20 incher we got yesterday. Sweet. I'm kind of patterning these fish a little bit. Let's get a measure on this snook. It's nothing too big, but it's bigger than what we got yesterday and it still could be the biggest if no one else gets anything else sizable. Cause all the guys yesterday, they said they just got small snook. This one is about 24 inches. All right, let's pop the mulligan out. All right, let's get back out there. They are hammering this little mulligan right now. And by the way, if you're fishing in an area with a lot of grass, these kind of hooks are definitely the best to fish with so that your lure isn't getting weeded up all the time. And also see how the hook point kind of sticks up from the plastic a little bit. What I like to do is pinch the plastic and just penetrate slightly the tip of the hook into the plastic so that it's completely flush like that. And that's how you keep it really, really weedless. Oh, another one. That's a real baby one. See ya. If I get something like 28, 30 inches, I would feel very confident that that could possibly take the snook category for the tournament. There's another one. Oh, he's going crazy. Oh, he threw it. <laughs> yeah, all snook, dude. That one was a little smaller than our 24, I think. There's another one. He threw it right there. Another real tiny one. Oh, another one. Jeez. They are really stacked here. Cool to see the population of little snook are really healthy here because it's definitely a real good sign for the future. There he is. Fish on, see? Whoa, is this a nice trout? No, another snook. It's only 2.3 here. There he is, see ya. So shortly after that last snook, that bite completely shut off. So Mike and I headed to the far end of the creek where we had some success yesterday. Ooh, perfect cast right there. Oh. 
Oh, there was a bite. Oh, he's still on it. Oh, he's still trying to eat it. Something small. Oh, what do we got there? Another little snook. Right off this sandy point. We're actually starting to work our way out of the creek and we're gonna head out to those islands in a minute because it's pretty slow right here. Ugh. There's a fish. I think we might have found a trout. Nice. Oh, there's another fish. No way, a little flounder. Now all we need is a redfish and we have an inshore slam. So after that flounder, Mike and I fished around the islands and sadly, although there were fish there, just like the day before, we could not get them to eat a single thing. So after we headed back for lunch. Well, another goose egg at that island chain. Although it just looks so fishy there and it may seem based on our results that there aren't any fish there, but I flew the drone around and there were a lot of reds and quite a few snook there. But unfortunately, uh, we just couldn't get a bite on the artificial. So that is the name of the game sometimes. But Mike, how you feeling? Ready to eat lunch, man. <laughs> yeah, me too. And it is boiling out here. So we're gonna go back to the lodge, meet up with the guys. And then I guess we're gonna hop in a boat and go to Cabbage Key for lunch, which sounds pretty interesting. It's like only a restaurant that you can get to by boat. So let's get the kayak all loaded up and we'll keep this day going and hopefully uh, go have some good food and maybe we'll do a little fishing on the boat later. All right, so we took a really nice refreshing ride in the Salt Strong boat to Cabbage Key. We all devoured some fire smoked fish dip and burgers. Then did a little more fishing after lunch to catch a few more trout. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second annual Salt Strong Affiliate Influencer Good Friends Now uh, Championship event. As you probably know, we have three different belts and the brand new slot machine rod going out to one lucky winner. So to reiterate what we're doing, we have three belts. We have snook, trout, and redfish. We've had about a day and a half to do this. And the largest redfish slot has to be a slot or bigger, largest trout, and then snook. And for this, it was kind of a anything goes, largest or longest fish. And uh, it could have been a shark, could have been a stingray, could have been a trout, unless Cameron's fishing. Okay. All right, so to start it off with the largest snook, and I don't remember the exact size, but it was a an amazing catch with a skip underneath the dock on the power front. By the way, all these had to be with artificial lures using ours, and this one had to be on the Fred the Jerk. We have Mr. Ryan Morey. The big winner! This, I think it will fit. I've been, you know, waiting for this my whole life, this moment right here. But yeah, that was absolutely epic to be able to catch that fish at the end of the day. And you know, I was worried that Rich was going to take home every single belt, but got to take one home on my own. And, uh, you know, got to thank the Salt Strong Boys for putting me on that dock that had that fish on it. True. And, you're, and you're technically now a two-time champion because no one won it last year, so out yes. of the two uh, years, Ryan's uh, the first to take the snook there belt. There it is. Technicality. So the technicality. <laughs> well done. Well done. Well done. And with the trout, this place, um, 
and, and by the way, we're in Pine Island area, Florida. I, I don't know that I've ever caught this many trout in a two-day. It was nuts. Uh, how many of you guys catch? Today alone, probably like 80. 80 in yeah. one boat in an afternoon. Trout were everywhere, but they're all small. Yeah. And so yesterday, yours truly was sitting in first place at like 16.4 inches, not pounds. <laughs> and uh, pretty puny trout. And Cameron, Canner, the hostess with the mostess, came in today with a uh, what size trout? 18 and a half. 18, 18 and, and a half. half. That'll do it. Man, congratulations, dude. Is this your first championship belt ever? It is. It is. I won one in the WWE, but fishing wise, this is. The first chance. I'm surprised you didn't wear your WD, WWE uniform, you know? You, everybody knows me. Stone Cold Cameron. <laughs> it was a setup Wait, to organize on. the event. Trout was a paid actor. Is that it with was. the G-string? The <laughs> <laughs> this guy. <laughs> and then we still have two more things left. And this person might need to keep just standing up here. With the largest redfish, and actually a stud red, we've got the one and only... The guy who is out there living his name more than anyone else I know, Fishaholic, with the largest redfish. Back to back redfish winner. Here we go. Dude. This one's actually gold, the plate there. The other one's silver. So it's cool. Really? Yeah, now they're, they're a, little, great. a little different. Yeah. Here we go. Put it on. Got to do the little dance again. The little dance. Last night, I did last night. <laughs> Something like that. All right. <laughs> Nice, so now I got I, one or two to wear. And you can stay up here. Just yes. stay up there. This rod. So we also did something unique this year. We're going to give the slot machine rod, $350 rod. And um, it was on the longest fish. And I don't even know if half of us even like wet a line. And we're getting a group text from Rich. And <laughs> he's already caught, a, was a 39 cobia? 39 and a half inch cobia. What in the world? Uh, like. <laughs> Right early first morning before anything started, and that ended up being it. Uh, we had a couple tarpon on, had some chances some sharks, but the 39 and a half inch cobia won. So totally, congratulations, thank dude. You. That was awesome. Totally dumb luck. Oh, just, heck of a day. Just saw a cruise in, thought it was like a big red or a jack her ball, and just chucked the thread there and just nailed it right away. And right Cam Cameron there. witnessed the whole thing, which was kind of it was really cool that I had a witness and all that. And it was, Probably one of my all-time favorite catches ever. It's paid nice. witness. So cool. but, hmm? it said paid witness, but paid witness. <laughs> Congratulations, dude. Good job, dude. There you go. Woo! Oh, oh, thank, you. thank you. Take this belt away. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Yeah. Anything you'd like to say to the people? Um, I, I can't be more happy right now. I got a, another redfish belt, and I got a brand new rod right here. Ready to catch some more fish. Uh, I'll tell you guys what, this is actually the belt that he wanted, and I wanted I, yeah. to make sure he was not getting it. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted that snook belt. That was that was the dream right there. So I really hope you all enjoyed this episode, and it was an amazing time with a great group of guys. And after the belts were given out, some guys went home, but for the few that stayed, we went back out for a chance at some more fish. There you go. You got a snook? Yep. Nice. Here, I'll land him for you. On a little power prawn. Nice. Found one. There he is, guys. Love it. Run the crows, man. See you. Yeah, no problem. All right, guys. Well, as you can see, the sun is set, and we fished our hearts out out here. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have any other significant bites. Uh, Joe got a little snook. Mike got a little trout right at sunset. And now we're going to wrap things up, head back to the dock, and go have some dinner. And that is going to be a wrap. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, check out Salt Strong, I'll put the links in the description. You shout out to everyone here. Woo! And, <laughs> and uh, everyone that was out for this trip that came and fished. And I'll put all their information and links to their channels down below. So go check them out and, and subscribe. And like always, live to fish, fish to live.